Hey guys, it's Rob McCallum. Uh, we're here at the Level Up Expo. I'm joined alongside with Mr. Glenn Stanway. Greetings and have, salutations. And we have a special guest here, Gerald Glassford from YourGameSource.com. Gerald, nice to see you again. Of course, I've been away for the last two weeks. I know. Glad you're around. Um, thanks you, for joining us. You are the world traveler, my friend. I'm hoping that ends very soon. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I, and I, and we got I, films to shoot. Yeah, I, I gotta feel get that's going. Not there you I'll, go. I'll, I'll let you guys talk while I go shoot another project I'm about to greenlight. Uh, well, this is Gerald Glass from, from YourGameSource.com. Um, you know, well, one of the sites that, that has truly tried to embrace Rob and, and all the great projects that he's done and, and how we tried to do what we can to support his, his great causes, not only for, for, for Glenn and, and Jay and you, uh, as well yes. as for all the great stuff you guys do, but uh, you know, going forward, you know, looking at that. I remember two years ago, we were here, actually yep. just a couple rows down, and this was a little bit smaller here at the Level Up, Level Up Expo. So. It's, it's grown. It's actually surprising to see how big it's grown in those two years. Yes, yes. They didn't have a stage. They didn't have as many, you know, booths or whatnot. I remember when I came here, I wasn't planning on doing very much. And then they said, well, here, we've got a whole, almost a whole aisle for, full of booths here. Pick one. So, yeah. Okay, I'll just go ahead. And I sat down. We had a couple interesting conversations with some other people. And then there was, I was approached by one of my friends, uh, I think it was Chris, he said, hey, I got this director guy. This director guy wants to, he said, it's okay to talk to him. All right, well, what's, what's, uh, what's he doing? Oh, uh, some kind of Nintendo Quest. Okay, uh, well, let's go sit down, we'll talk to him. And look at two years later. Here we are. Here we are. We haven't really moved on up that much. <laughs> I don't remember where I was two years ago. Uh, I wasn't in Las Vegas. No, we hadn't started GamerCast yet. No, we had not. It was just before GamerCast started. It was just before. It was about two months before GamerCast. Back in those Halcyon days. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Mason Kramer was here with me, and we were interviewed uh, by your, your staff. Absolutely, and, and we were uh, privileged to do so. Uh, it's still available online in its entirety. Uh, but I want to ask you guys this. Sure. And I'll start off with you, Rob. It's been two years. Yeah. How has the Nintendo Quest experience? Looking back, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's, it's officially, because it's not in the rearview mirror, it's still a part of it today. You're still in it today, but it's getting closer to the end than, you know, as far as it's concerned, the Nintendo Quest, um, how should I say, phenomena. Looking back on it now, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, it's just really nice to see how far we've gone. Of course, we've released the feature film. Uh, we've fulfilled um, most of our Kickstarter promises. We are in the final stages of the last one, which is, of course, fulfilling the game that we're developing uh, on based on the film. And now we've released the Power Tour as well, which was us touring the film around. Uh, it's pretty cool to see how far we've come. And, of course, coupled all in around that is 100 episodes of GamerCast that, that we've done, which, have, which has really taken us in a lot more areas than the promotional origins, which we thought. Wouldn't you say, Glenn? I would say, Rob. Gerald, you were asking, you know, what it's like now that uh, Nintendo Quest is a little bit on autopilot. It's it's that blessing and the curse that it's out in the final stage. People can actually watch it now. So the effort is all behind promoting it and pushing it. And part of that is the power tour, of course. And, and it's great that it's out there. Um, it's uh, it, I don't know if I've got enough perspective on it yet. It's been Nintendo Quest and GamerCast have been so much a part of my life for these last two years it's really hard to think about the fact that there there won't be that for at least some period of time just between us getting the film out and, and sort of wrapping up the promotional push for it and uh, you know taking a hiatus from GamerCast and sort of reflecting on, on what that's been and, and what it might be well, uh, it's I just say, hard to think about that well, when I say for both of you Nintendo Quest and GamerCast has led to so many different, you know, has opened so many doors for both of you. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, I believe anything that you do will always lead to other things, um, whether that's personal decisions to go in a different direction or from outsiders coming in saying, yeah, I like what that guy did, I want to work with him, how can we partner up, or even just straight up like business opportunities to, I know people are developing products for Nintendo Quest in that brand that they want to license that name from us in order to help push other things. So 
there, there's a lot of gears that are always turning in, and it is strange because you know our hands are a little bit tied at this point. Like, how do we keep pushing things going forward, and, and how do we keep the life cycle going without letting it die? And that's uh, it, it's a, it's a mind shift in that it's not over. You can't think of that it's dying because it's always going to be out there. We'll always be the people that's part of that. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And it's one thing that I always stress to Jay a lot. I'm like, you know, just because you know we shot Nintendo Quest three years ago we shot that which is a long time it's only been out for a little past six months regardless of what he does next month or next year he'll always be the guy that did Nintendo Quest and uh, that says a lot more than you know you think and that's something I've, I've asked before but it's even uh, I guess hits home a little bit more now I had a chance to talk to Jay a little bit earlier this week and, um, about some various things his cosplay his other interests whatnot but I want to talk to you guys because you know him so well, uh, you know, because you, you see him constantly, um, yep. Rob, you we talk to him constantly, yep. even though you two are on different, uh, in different countries now. Um, tell me how he has grown since the filming of the movie. I know I've touched on it a little bit, but I want, I want to know more now that it's even more, like you said, three years since the film, since the, the film has uh, you know, wrapped I'm gonna, up. I'm going to let Glenn handle this one. How has he grown? Be honest, Gerald. It's I, I think I think Jay's still really even searching for an answer to that. I mean, I, I think this experience, and I can speak to to my own part in this as well because I see it reflected in Jay. We've gotten we've gotten a chance to do so many things because of this film and because of Rob's choice on how he wanted to promote this film that we've really had our eyes open to a much larger world than I think we were really aware of. And I think that that's opened some doors and it's also potentially presented some opportunities. And it's really just, it's really just trying to decide what that next step is and how to take it. I've, I've been very fortunate in that um, my role in with the podcast and with the film has in a roundabout way helped me get into the game industry. And it's really helped me change my life in terms of my career and, and, and what I feel like going to work every day. And may I be one of the first to congratulate you on that as far as the Thank you very on. much. I appreciate that. Uh, it's, it's been awesome to, to get that support from people. But uh, and, and Rob's obviously been able to, to pursue other projects. They've been sort of an extension and an evolution of what he's done in Nintendo Quest. So I think that's really the challenge is just trying to trying to see those opportunities and, and take advantage of them. And, and, that's, uh, and that's tough. And I think we're in that... We're in that stage now where, again, we are sort of winding down our promotional push on the film, and I think there is a little bit of a sense uh, of all of us, and I think this is part of why we're doing the podcast hiatus, is we all sort of feel like we're in limbo a little bit, and we need to kind of take a step back and absorb all of this, and decide what we want to do with it going forward. I think I think we, we like the idea of having that that good kind of milestone where we can say okay great we did this we're proud to have done this now let's let's think about what that means for a little bit and kind of decide where we want to go from there it's really strange because you know that you've done something special but you don't know what that really means and you know it's special because people respond to what you've done with sincere emotions and they bestow importance upon it and why it's important to me might be why different compared to why it's important to you with Nintendo Quest specifically, but you know that there's something special about that, but putting your finger on why it's special is hard, and I think you do need to take a step back and realize what why it is special, and what it means to you, and how it has changed you, and like Glenn was saying, one of the reasons that we want to step away from, from GamerCast is to, A, not dilute what that is, but truly understand what that is so we can re-gear and come back at it. And I think Jay's in the same same boat where we're all just, we're happy with what we've done. Nintendo Quest is great now that it's in the kind of final stage, which is the hardest stage to get to. And it's, it's gonna just be nice to see how things unfold naturally from here. I, I know that's sort of a, it, it's a vague answer at best, but I mean, I, I think if you wanna boil it down to it's like base level of simplicity. When you see what Jay's doing with, with his cosplay enthusiasm now, and, uh, and even Rocket Queen, his, the way yeah, that... Yeah, his Guns N' Roses cover band. Like, these are all... He's taking cues from everything that we've done. And I don't want to speak on on his behalf, but you asked us to speculate how he might have grown. 
I can see him very much take cues of what it means to be a producer, to organize stuff behind the things that he loves in order to make them bigger than his own individual passion. And this is a guy who's also, you know, taking some chances in, and maybe being a little bolder about the things he's choosing to do than he might have. Because he'd be the first to tell you when they were shooting Nintendo Quest, I don't think he... I, I don't think he felt they were necessarily telling a story he thought was going to be compelling. I know that he was really, really worried about being interesting on screen. Yeah. So I think I think that experience really taught him a lot about how all of that work in the background produces something yeah. that might feel a little bit differently than it does at the time that it's happening. So. And I've just, from my times that I've been able to be fortunate enough to see the movie, um, I see that development of him as an individual on the screen, how he grew just in that short amount of time that you guys were filming, um, how he grew as an individual. It just, just makes the movie that much more satisfying a, a watch for, for anybody to easily identify with. Um, and I'll touch on that, uh, something a little bit on that a little bit in a later. That'll be my last question. Uh, but, but I want to touch on a couple things as far as the power tour. Okay. And what, what an experience for you guys that has been. Um, actually, you know, I, I know that you, you've been very uh, forthcoming as far as being able to put that out there as far as different into the different episodes, the different stages of where the motion got as far as from around the country and actually is also Canada as well. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that and then some of the later episodes that, that uh, you know that are still maybe not everybody is caught yet but definitely definitely do need to do so. Well, the power tour for those that don't know is uh, essentially uh, the journey of Jay and I and company taking the finished film Nintendo Quest around North America and what stitches all the all the episodes together it's not only the communities that we visit, the people that we interview and the collections we see, but also more game hunting where Jay and I are trying to knock off a list of 10 games that we'd like to see in our collection. Some are notable titles, some are just kind of the staples that you want. But when you tie in all those things together, more game hunting, uh, people of significance uh, and, and stores of significance in the country, some of which that we had visited before, some of which were new to us, it really becomes something special. and. To be able to explore the subject matter that was uh, initially discussed in Nintendo Quest, but in a series-based format, was really refreshing to me because we could do more. We could focus the episodes more thematically um, up in, across all eight episodes too, which was really nice. So we did release them online for free for a brief window, and then we had a deal in place that had us take them offline. But now you can get it on disc, and that's. One of the main reasons we're here at Level Up Expo, it's the first time in public that you can buy Nintendo Quest Power Tour on DVD and Blu-ray. With an exclusive ninth episode that's not available, has never been available online. And that's something I want to get to in a second. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Spoiler uh -oh. alert. Because, uh, as you know, Glenn, the, the Power Tour episodes take you along each stage of the journey. and. Um, I, for one, am grateful that I was along for part of that Episode journey. 2, MC at the uh, Vegas screening. Yes, without the microphone being turned on, but my, my loud voice actually projected through anyways. So. It's a life skill, Gerald. It's there okay. It's a life skill. It'll serve you well. Trust me. <laughs> but starting from Beverly Hills, your, your quest through California, to, through Texas. California! Uh, through all the various stops. Las Vegas, of course, yeah. like you said in Episode 2. Um, I want to talk more about the later episodes. Sure. Um, you know, Portland, obviously coming home to London, Ontario, was very important for you both. Uh, your, your stop in Portland. And then that uh, we'll talk about the elusive and secretive and highly top secret ninth episode as well. But first off, let's talk about a little bit about your homecoming in London. Well, I think Glenn might have the most uh, objective uh viewpoint on that for so, me it was I remember talking to you at that time about it, it being a little bit emotional for you as far as going back home and being able to present your work in that it, it's always a big deal for me and I just premiered Missing Mom there uh, last weekend and there's something I like about having that continuity and that opportunity to 
be able to present my work on a consistent platform and build that that not fan base but that expectations on, you know where people know that if I'm gonna have a film that there's a good chance that I'll be able to do this here with some sort of continuity to, to how I present my work and what my work means and the evolution of that for me going back home to London was was great to be able to continue that tradition but at the same time it was really hard because when you go back home as any of us do if you don't live at home there's always the, the family quotient, the friend quotient, where you're trying to do all the visits and, and the hangouts and stuff, and we had people fly over from England. So as great as that was to be able to do it and celebrate with those people, it, it really complicated the, the filming aspects of the Power Tour. So it was, I, w I was torn between being able to really enjoy it and get the job done. And for you, Glenn, I know you were, especially in the London, uh, when, it, when the screenings were coming to London, I know you were a major part of the promotion there. Uh, tell us more about that type of experience for you. I don't know. I, I mean, you talk about me being part of the promotion, and I don't really look at it. I don't really look at it from that perspective of being that formal about it. Really, I just I, I did everything I could to try and help spread the word and, and share. But I mean, I think I think we were fortunate to have a really supportive group of folks in our hometown that were really, you know, hungry to see the finished product and really happy to support us in doing it. So, you know, we had the backing of uh, FM 96, which is the local rock station in London, Ontario. Um, you know, we, we've been fortunate enough to make connections like that and, and just know the right people to kind of help us get that word out. It's, it's nice to be taken as like a legitimate artist. But when you go to like the biggest station in town, you say, this is what we're doing. Are you interested in being on board? And they see the trailer, they see the community following, they, they understand the significance without watching the film. It's it's kind of refreshing that, yeah, you can do it if you put the nose to the grindstone and you know your work is good enough to make the cut. People will believe in you and support you. The tricky part for me about, about the whole power tour really, but this, this is no less true of London, is it's really difficult for me to separate the screenings themselves from the experience surrounding the screening because there's there's so much that's happened around even what you see in the power tour episodes i mean rob yeah. touched on uh on our buddy ian hook visiting from from england when we uh we screened the film in london and uh and that was a big deal and, and so much of that experience for me is tied around that chance of getting to meet a friend face to face for the first time and really I don't know really kind of develop that next step of our relationship just in terms of our friendship uh, I, I was I got to pick up Ian from the airport and we got a chance we got a chance to spend two hours in the car on the way back to London from Toronto chatting and catching up and really getting to know each other and that's an experience that uh, Robin and Jay didn't really get to have um, so so I, I feel I feel great for having you had that son chance. of a yeah. <laughs> but it's it's tough for me to separate that sort of peripheral stuff from just the actual screening itself. I could say the screening was was incredible. I mean, we 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 ran late because we had so many people continuing to cram themselves into that theater. Yeah. There was a line out the lobby and back into the theater. It's a single screen theater. The lobby area is about as wide as the booth we're at, so it's maybe 15 feet wide by 20 feet long. And the lineup was in the theater through the lobby and back kind of out to allow people to sit down but we had to delay the screening by 10 minutes for me it was uh it felt like the the, the biggest event of the power tour and honestly one of the reasons it felt that way is because we were premiering two trailers that night that nobody knew about we premiered the the teaser for power of gray skull and uh, the, the trailer for the Kitty documentary, Kitty Origins and Evolutions. So that was that was pretty exciting to make it a complete show with a packed 400 person audience with stuff that nobody expected to see. I, I absolutely, and seeing that on screen was just a great experience. And I know uh, from my, my personal experience, seeing your notes, seeing the comments that you made, seeing the type of feedback that was given by locals in that area, just, just truly re you know, representative of all the love that they have for you and all the love that they have for Nintendo Quest as far as I'm concerned. Um, your next trip was to Portland as far as the next episode there. Yeah, and the next episode, to, yeah. You went to a gaming expo, I believe, in Portland area, correct? 
We did. Yeah, yes. the, ep- the episode itself is broken into kind of two halves. We are in Portland when it starts, but we flash back to brief stops in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and in Cleveland, Ohio, where there was also screenings. Uh, and those are really cool to, to meet those communities there. And it was that kind of a whirlwind because we had the London screening. Four days later, I was in Edmonton. Two days later, I was back in Cleveland. And then three days after that, we were in Portland. So it was, it was kind of like the marathon gauntlet. What sticks out about Portland to you, though? Whether it's the filming experience or, again, the experience the traveling. traveling. Yeah. Portland was probably my favorite stop on the entire tour. And at least part of that is because I didn't expect to go. Uh, I was initially not going to go to Portland. And then uh, at the last minute, Rob, you approached me about going because you just needed an extra pair of hands. Just in case. Some assistance with, with the booth and filming and, and that sort of thing. So, um, so. It was good for me because it was such a surprise, first of all. Um, secondly, I, I adore Portland. Portland is just an awesome city. I, uh, it, it's a beautiful city. Crap breweries everywhere, which is right up my alley. Uh, I love uh, I love the Western US. Uh, I love the American Southwest, as I've discussed at length since I've been here. Uh, but I, I just it's a beautiful part of the country. It's an awesome city. I really like the character of the city and the personality of the city. Uh, we got a chance to meet some friends, again, face-to-face for the first time there. Uh, our good pal Josh Schmidt, uh, guys like uh, Murph, Jay Murphy, who helped support Nintendo Quest, uh, and his lovely wife. And it was just... Uh, it was just a great experience, kind of putting faces to those. And it was the first time you got to see Doug and Nicole too. And it was the first time I got to meet Doug and Nicole from Retro City Games. We're a very big part of not only your life but also they, kind of everything we've done. They push Nintendo Quest. They're a key sponsor on the Power Tour. They're a key sponsor on GamerCast. Again, people that don't have to but choose to believe us because whether it, it helps them out as, as a sponsor with advertising or whether it's for the greater good, they just get it and it's rare to find people that, that they, are like and that. And they helped to come up with the, uh, the concept for, for Box Art, correct? Yes, very much so. Very much so. They're integral and they are producers on Box Art. I don't know if you want to segue to Box Art now or well, if you want to talk about the power tour. There is one thing I want to bring up first because I want to hear you talk about this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. But we also got the chance to screen Nintendo Quest in this absolutely gorgeous classic movie house yeah. in Portland. How much did that mean to you? It's cool because I, like most of the places that we screen the film, I try to research it so I have a real understanding of the history of what we're screening. A place like UNLV, which was of course was the campus room, a little bit different compared to this classic Hollywood cinema movie palace that had like, you know, the premiere of The Apartment, the premiere of Rocky, uh, Jaws, Star Wars, like, Back when cinema like had its like kind of second rebirth in the 70s with some real auteurs, this was the place in Portland that was screening it for the first time. In some cases, the first place on the West Coast outside of Hollywood to screen these films that I would say have impacted not just pop culture but the world since. So to have Nintendo Quest kind of share the screen despite some modern renovations, it's, it's kind of a privilege. Again, it's like, wow, we made the grade for something like this. And the staff, welcoming open arms the the retro gaming expo connected us with them um, <laughs> they were quick to pay because we split the box off which was great they were very generous with concessions for us and uh, they were just very accommodating down-to-earth people that believed in what we wanted to do as as filmmakers and that obviously was obviously a uh, very positive experience for you sounds like for both of you I got a question for Glenn. Glenn, did it hit you when you no, went I'm up? I'm not on... answering any more questions. All right, no more questions around there. Uh, when you went up on stage, Glenn, for everybody that doesn't know, for the tours, the stops that he was at was essentially the MC by default because I wanted to be introduced. <laughs> so I made Glenn go up there and kind of spittle around for a few minutes. Did go, you hey, realize? Hey, go, go on stage. Go say my name. Go yeah. say my name. Go say. Introduce me. Introduce me. I'm wearing sunglasses. I must be famous. Uh, when you got on stage, did you realize that was the last time that you were introducing that? I don't really think it hit me, no. Um, I really hadn't, and I hadn't done it in London. Right. Because, of course, FM 96 radio personality Sarah Burke emceed in London, which was the other thing that was kind of neat about London, is I got more of a chance to be part of the audience at that one. Um, and I felt bad about that. I, I was on stage at the end, and you'll see in the Power Tour episode, I'm up there. I don't think I said a word. No, but I feel bad about, like, taking you out. Because like, it gets to a point, and Jay and I get this way with interviews that we had done, 
where it becomes a little bit like an act, yeah. where we know what we're saying, the beats, and, and how to feel things out and put on this, the show. You know, we know how to set the circus It's like any off. good band, you know how to play off each other. Yeah, yeah, there's a certain order of things that, that occur, and taking you out of that made it a little bit of a wild card, because we had no idea what Sarah was going to say, but we got you back for Portland. It, it really didn't hit me until afterwards. I think it, it hit me the next day, it, shooting in the hotel room. Uh, as Jay was preparing to, to get ready to leave. Uh, and that's when I was kind of like, wow, we're not we're not doing this anymore. This is it? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I still, seeing that on film, and what's interesting about that is the way you chose to, to set, we only had me operating camera, so he had another stationary camera somewhere else in the room. And what's interesting about that to me is I'm actually in frame a lot of the time because it cuts back and forth between those two cameras. So it really hits me every time I see that because I do get to see myself as part of what's happening as things really kind of start to come to an end. But that's essentially, in a nutshell, what I wanted the Power Tour to become. Nintendo Quest is very much about Jay and Nintendo culture. You know, I wanted the Power Tour to take those people that we identified in the Nintendo culture segments and make it more about everybody so that's why we interview more people it's it's jay and i and then jay and i and glenn introducing stuff and other people that you know come and hang out throughout the whole process and that's uh like i said just a great experience indeed um but i, I before i touch on a little bit more with others of the subjects i just want to ask could you tell us a little bit guys about the secretive episode nine Glenn, tell us about episode 9. Uh, I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So I can tell you that. I'm the keeper of the footage. Keeper of the footage. Uh, it is exclusive to the Power Tour discs, DVD, and Blu-ray. Of course, you can go to NintendoQuest.com and order them. Uh, it's, in some ways, it's, it's probably what you expect it to be. I wanted something special on the DVD. And we couldn't shoot another episode. There was not another stop on the Power Tour, right? Like... So I was kind of, how do I make this work? But like Glenn said, there's so much that happens that goes around what you see in the current episode. So that's kind of where I started from how these were gonna, how this was gonna put together. And it turns out we had a, a lot of segments that didn't make the cut. And it's not just all oh, these are the leftover kind of rejects. There, are, there are I think five or six really cool segments where you get to see more of the community, more of Jay and I with our guards let down even more. Just kind of in the moment on the on the road like the kind of stuff yeah. that we we certainly couldn't do in nintendo quest because of the 90 minute run time like you get to see what it's like being on the power tour and some of the other cool people we met and the things that we did and it definitely sounds like it's a great value indeed and that is i a, think so and that is an extra is that correct yeah it's an extra episode so there's nine episodes on the discs if you buy the power tour digitally you only get access to eight uh, there you go uh, so you've got some more projects on the queue. No, that, not me. Okay, because I know you both are very busy gentlemen indeed. Glenn, let's talk first about what's what's ahead for you going forward. Yeah, I know you got some stuff going on with the studio that you're part yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Um, the fun thing about the uh, the video game industry is how frequently you can't actually talk about what you're working. <laughs> so. Uh, at this point, I, I Three can't letters, say it. NDA. NDA. But we, uh, uh, our flagship title at Tiny Titan Studios is a mobile game called Dash Quest, which uh, many of our listeners may be familiar with. I've uh, been fortunate enough to have many of our listeners reach out to us and reach out to me and actually talk about how much they love the game. And, and seeing them support the game is great. But uh, we've had a real sort of uprising of support on the Google side of that uh, of that business lately and that's been really awesome to see so we're really trying to ride, ride that wave for as long as we can and really trying to take a critical look at the game and see how we can make it the best possible experience that can be for everybody playing it so over the next little while we're going to be dedicating a little more time to uh, to really just trying to streamline the game experience and really make it everything it can be and just make it make it the best experience for as many people as it can be on as many different devices that they choose to play it on. Uh, we do have another game called Tapsmiths, which we'll be launching uh, hopefully before the end of this month. 
And uh, we got some other irons in the fire that we really aren't in a position to talk about, but it's a really, really exciting time to be part of what's going on at Tiny Titan, and I feel I feel so incredibly fortunate to be part of it, and, and uh, it's been a great experience for me. It's really changed my life. That's awesome, and uh, I congratulate you on that, and definitely looking forward to seeing what the studio's Thank gonna you, be uh, bringing out very soon. And Rob, uh, I know you still have got a lot on the plate, we're gonna get, we're getting our picture taken right now yes. by, by your daughter Gerald. Yes, yes, my daughter yes. Ellen, who absolutely is your biggest fan of the movie Nintendo Quest. We're getting our picture taken in three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> we're having technical difficulties. What you do? What's the matter? Is it set to video by mistake? No, that's it's good. We're taking pictures of our discs on the table now. Oh, here we go. All right, well, Gerald, while you figure out the tech specs, let me uh, ramble on about what's so going many, on. so many other things that are now on the queue for you as well. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that I haven't really had a chance to talk about is we finally launched, I finally launched robmccallumfilms.com because it uh, became apparently clear that I needed a one-stop shop for everything that I am doing. Three, two, one. All right, the picture's good. Um, so robmccallumfilms.com is now launched. It is your the place to go for blog posts on all the different projects I'm doing. Uh, a place to check out the, where you can buy discs and kind of everything in between, frequent collaborators and social media sites. Uh, we just premiered Missing Mom last week in London, Ontario, which was awesome. That is available now. And it's catching a lot of people off guard. So I look forward to being able to really spread the word uh, on that film. And later this year... It's uh, available on Vimeo, correct? It's available on Vimeo. Again, go to robmccallumfilms.com. Link's right there to check it out. Or search Vimeo On Demand, Missing Mom Documentary. You'll, you'll find it. Um, and later this year, hopefully, the documentary on Kitty, Kitty Origins and Evolutions, come out uh, with both a fan cut and, we believe, a distribution cut. The difference being three hours long for the fans and about, I don't know, an hour 45 for regular folk that maybe don't know the band as well and don't want to have all the intricate details. So, uh, pretty exciting to have a year with two films released. Absolutely. Uh, it looks like, indeed, uh, still a busy time for you. And one last question. Like I said, it's been two years we were here. We talked so much about Nintendo Quest at, time, at that time and what hopes you had for the success of the film. The film, in my opinion, has been, been a great success, both on a critical basis now, obviously, a lot of people have liked it as well, which leads me into my last question for both of you. Any thoughts on a Nintendo Quest sequel? I've heard slight rumors here and there pop up now did, and then. Well, did you watch the very last episode of the Power Tour? Uh, as far as that's concerned, yeah. Did you watch past the credits? As far as, uh, like, a Marvel setup? Yeah. No, I did not. This well, interview is over. No, this interview is over because we addressed that very specifically. Look at you, Gerald. You're, you're caught off guard, and now that we've wet your whistle, everybody else will have to go out and check. And now I have to go check again because I have it, so i got to go check it out again. There you go. Well, Pass you know what? Why don't you pick up a disc copy, and you can get the ninth episode as well, as seeing what's after the credits of episode eight. <laughs> but that will answer the question definitively. Uh, I, I think so. I think it certainly alludes to it. It's a pretty definitive answer, I think. Yeah. Yes, I have some. Cool. Uh, anything else for us? Pretty no. Nintendo Quest Universe. So, well, actually, All the films tie into each other. How can best, as far as it's concerned, can fans get a hold of you both, as far as the projects you do, obviously with your studio? Best, uh, best Facebook, uh, oh, yeah, Twitter. Of yeah, you can uh, you can visit our uh, our website at tinytitanstudios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Tiny Titan Games. And you can also find us on Facebook at Tiny Titan Games. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'd say Facebook and, and Twitter are great ways to interact with us and keep tabs on what we're doing. And NintendoQuest.com, RobMcAllenFilms.com. There's ways to email, email us, uh, message us on Facebook, and of course, tweet at us on Twitter. And Gerald, where can folks get a hold of you? At GameSource, GameSource on Facebook, and a new site, Pop Culture Cosmos on Facebook. And since Twitter won't give me another S, Pop Culture Cosmo on Twitter. 
Evelyn, where can people get a hold of you? You're the pop culture Cosmo. Yeah, well, what can I say? Twitter will not give me another S. Okay, fair enough. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we may continue to record at Level Up Expo. We may not. We've actually had a pretty great interview around 35 minutes. So uh, for myself, Rob McCallum, uh, Glenn Stanway. Stan Buck, signing off from the desert. And thanks again to our special guest for his wonderful, thoughtful questions, uh, Gerald Glassford. I appreciate your time, gentlemen. And again, I wish you both continued success. Yeah, we but really appreciate only, the support, Gerald. Thank oh, you. Oh, no worries. Not only with the film, but with all your other projects as well. Until next time, game on.